Hello, hello, hello. Today is Friday night. It is May the 3rd and we have entered into a new month here on the East Coast. We're officially entering into spring. So the weather's changing. Things are starting to mellow out and get all cool. Um, it's amazing weather here eventually. I mean, it hasn't been perfect, but we are transitioning that way. Um, I had an incredible time last week. A colleague of mine had a birthday and I went to celebrate with him and some other friends and we were hanging out in the West Village of New York City. And if you've ever been to the West Village in New York City, there is nothing like it. There's like this amazing euphoric feeling you get as you begin to like stroll the streets it never happens i drove down uh gosh what was the seventh avenue yeah seventh avenue south because we dined at um this cab caliente it's a mexican restaurant in the west village and um i got perfect parking literally like right around the corner from the restaurant and so we were hanging out, we was, you know, it's like when you get with a friend and you spent all this time and you're talking and you're catching up and the night is kind of still young. I'm starting to be like, okay, I had a couple of drinks and I do have to drive. So maybe I want to consider getting ready to leave soon. Right. But the attitude was like, oh, let's do something else. And so I remembered, of course, this amazing neighborhood. It's like my top five neighborhoods in New York City. Maybe I have to do a video on that. But in anyway, West Village, always love the West Village. There's so much going on. There's so much happening. Very artistic crowd, culturally, just, uh, it's, it's an amazing place, okay? If you've never been there, New York City, West Village, okay? We went to Cafe Wa, which ended up having maximum capacity. So then we ended up going to this other jazz spot. Literally around the corner, there's Blue Jazz, Blue Note Jazz, IFC Theater. Um, we like club top. It was amazing. Okay. I just had an amazing, amazing, incredible time. And so I just had to share that. And having said that, you are now tuning into Pop Analysis. And this Friday, we are going to be analyzing Title IX. All right, Title IX is what we're going to be talking about. So those of you who know me, this is Pop Analysis, also known as Shala. I am reporting to you from my bedroom, okay? This is my bedroom. Well, it's my office space, put it like that. Um, and so like I said, we are going to be talking about Title IX. And what is Title IX? And so this pretty much came up um, because, unfortunately, this administration has made some adjustments to the language in Title IX. And so I don't know if you guys saw the recent news talking about Title IX. Essentially, this is protecting women's rights. And um, so Governor Sanders um, has signed an executive order. It says defying um, this administration's Title IX rules. So again, here they are. They're trying to change language and I mean, this is at the federal level, so it's really out of control. But in the event that you are not aware about this, that's what we're talking about this evening. And I thought, what not? Well, I should be talking about this, right? I'm a woman. I'm a woman. So I think this is a, it's a great topic. It's a developing one. Um, I don't know where all the feminists are, if they still are around. I thought we were, fate, you know, like fighting against the patriarchy. And so essentially there'd be like no protections for women right now is what we are basically trending towards. There will be no protection for women. And this is a travesty. And so this is almost probably going to be the new civil rights fight of our time. Um, so, okay, having said that. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders issued an executive order on Thursday directing state schools to defy the Biden administration's expansion of Title IX operations to include students identifying as transgender. The Republican governor's order signed on Thursday asserts the state's commitment to preserving the traditional understanding of sex as an immutable characteristic of the human body 
firmly rooted in biology and created order. The government should celebrate, not erase, sex differences by providing proper protections for them, the order reads. It also states that the Biden administration has rejected reality and chosen to appease their left-wing base over student safety and best interests. The order comes in response to the Biden administration's recent redefinition of sex under Title IX to include gender identity, a move viewed by Ms. Sanders as a departure from the law's original intent. And that's exactly what it is. It is a departure. The Biden administration is attempting to unilaterally rewrite federal law to advance its radical gender ideology against women and girls, reads the order by Ms. Sanders, who once served as press secretary during the Trump administration. Ms. Sanders said in her order that the new rules expanded definition of sex to include sexual orientation and gender identity was plainly ridiculous. She said it would lead to males unfairly competing in women's sports, which we know that's already happening, receiving access to women and girls' lockers rooms, bathrooms, and private spaces, and competing for women's scholarships. The reinterpretation of Title IX by the Biden administration outlined in a document spanning nearly 460,000 words has also drawn criticism from a slate of GOP attorneys, GOP attorney generals, who have filed lawsuits challenging it. Question, why is it only GOP attorney generals who are challenging this? So you're telling me not one Democrat is against this? So not even a Democrat is this? So basically you're saying that this is not getting bipartisan. It's not a bipartisan challenge. It's a GOP challenge. That's unfortunate. Ms. Sanders notes in her order that compared to the lengthy rewrite, the original Title IX contains a succinct 37 words when it was signed into law in 1972. Title IX is a landmark 1972 civil rights law that aims to eliminate discrimination based on sex and federally funded educational programs and to provide equal opportunities for women. The new rule, which redefines sex to include gender identity, was announced on April 19th. Schools and colleges that fail to comply with this new rule may lose federal funding. So they they have the guys. They're basically threatening school districts or any kind of institution that's receiving federal funding. If they're not recognizing or complying um, with these new standards, um, they're going to basically hold those institutions hostage. Um, so let me just continue a little bit and we are wrapping up on this guys. Speaking at the Arkansas Capitol in Little Rock on Thursday, Ms. Sanders says she has a clear message for the president's administration. We will not comply. If Biden gets his way, female students will shower and change next to male college students. Referring to someone using biologically correct pronouns will get you all in front of a disciplinary board for harassment and scholarships previously reserved for women will now be open to anyone claiming to be a woman, Ms. Sanders said, according to multiple outlets. Over a dozen Republican-led states have filed lawsuits against the U.S. Department of Education. I'll repeat that. Over a dozen Republican-led states have filed lawsuits against the U.S. Department of Education, arguing that the new Title IX regulations are unlawful. The Arkansas governor said her state would also sue the Biden administration for any financial loss, including loss of funding incurred by the state due to the passage of the Biden administration's unscientific agendas. All right, so this article was written by Epic Times writer, Caden Pearson. And basically, this is where it is, guys. They are revising and trying to rewrite laws to appease a certain part of the population. The funny thing is, I don't see the reverse. I don't see trans males arguing and demanding to be in male-dominated spaces. I don't see them arguing and demanding to be in male-dominated sports, 
to swim with them, to compete with them. Why? Well, simple, because they know their limitations. So how is that fair? How is that fair? The biological woman who feels that she is male is not doing what the male who feels like he is female doing. It doesn't make sense. It is bizarre. It's weird science, but it's not science, right? It's because, you know, they don't agree with the science. This is the science that they don't like. This is the science that they avoid. Um, it's insane. It's crazy. Um, I don't have any young, you know, daughter who is um, an athlete or competing, but I could have a granddaughter someday and I would have an issue with this. So this is wrong. And I truly hope that legitimate women like I don't know where the feminists is. Where, where are the feminists? I hope that women start to band together because we are the only ones that can truthfully, truthfully take on this fight. We are the best voice for this movement. Where are the feminists? That's all I'm saying. And that's the end of this video for tonight, guys. Yeah, very simple. Um, I hope I didn't bore you in the beginning talking about my fun night last week. It was amazing. Um, there are additional amazing events coming up and I'll keep you guys posted. But it was wonderful coming back on here and addressing you guys and to talk about something so important, which is women's rights. Um, like, share, subscribe. I am trying to grow, guys. Help me grow if you like my content, if you appreciate my input, if you think that the message will benefit someone or get me some women on following this channel that would be amazing and awesome so you have a wonderful friday night i am um, i just enjoyed i dined on some amazing sushi it was delicious and that's going along with my margarita all right so you guys have a wonderful time enjoy your friday have a great weekend and this is pop analysis signing off see you next time bye